you're Taiwanese American. Yeah. And throughout your career, you've been involved with very um, sometimes very high profile Asian American sort of works, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we thought maybe you have a really good perspective on what we want to make today's topic, mm. which is very t timely and controversial now, which is the whitewashing in Asian themed films and cinema. Mm -hmm. We've got what Zhang Yimou made, The Great Wall, right? Mm -hmm. With Matt Damon, who's saving China. We've got uh, Ghost in the Shell is coming out, right? Yeah, and that's it's coming out. Uh, it's the Iron Fist control. Scar the Scar Joe is uh, <laughs> yeah. Scar Joe is uh, well, he's playing he's supposed to be a Japanese character, or are they just well, the name of a cat uh, in the original is uh, Kusanagi, Major right. Motoko Kusanagi. So yeah, that leads us to the to, to the, the yes yeah, so to the, the whitewashing problem <laughs> yes, controversy. It's an issue for sure. Uh, you so know, what, yeah, what's your perspective on, on because it's now more visible with these big films coming out, and it's rather central to what you do. I mean, yeah, you, absolutely, you, you, you're taking up, uh, you're tackling a topic that's been approached by Hollywood uh, films before in ways that you, you know, that are not necessarily satisfactory because it's there's a heavy, there's a fair amount of fetishization, orientalization. So in many ways, what you do is trying to reappropriate. This, this topic, particularly well, the, the snake head uh, issue, uh, issue, can you yeah, call sure. it that, right. and, and make it more authentic. So I think you're, you're kind of at the center of all of this by, by placing Asians, yeah. uh, Asian matters in Asian hands. So right, right. So yeah. what, what's your take on this in general? And I guess we can get into uh, the details, the yeah. specifics, because yeah. there's a lot going on right now. There is, there is. Well, you know, I, when I set out to work in this industry, it was always one of my goals to, you know, to the degree that I could, you know, and, and I, and my sort of brethren around me, I felt like there was this movement of, uh, you know, we, we recognized the, the lack of obviously positive portrayals on screen, but then the, the root of it was, was, was really the people at the top, right? The gatekeepers. So, if you're a director, you're a studio executive, you're even a writer, whatever it is, like people who are conceiving of stories and greenlighting them ultimately, usually, again, the people who are in those positions are not of Asian descent in America, right? So it's all another conversation with Nyaf films, right? Sure. That, but we're talking about something separate here. So, um, so that needed to change. So we needed more producers, more executives, more creatives to be, have our point of view, right? And that's, that's why Evan and myself, and you know, I know tons and tons of other filmmakers uh, who are telling their own stories, right? Creating, creating material content because the only way we're going to make a difference or, or push those, those storylines and characters into the forefront is through our own means. And so right, right. it's starting to happen. It's crossing over to, to where the mainstream, you know, and, and people in those positions who aren't already Asian, Asian American are like, oh, okay, oh wow, we have to think about it this way. Like I, you know, so, so thankfully the needle's finally moving in the right direction. I think that there's a lot of factors as to why that is. I think there's, I mean, obviously social media, there's strength in numbers, the more, more people that are, that are uh, taking this career path, um, more talent is being developed. Obviously, there's a, this this whole, you know, China Korea influence. Uh -huh. You know, particularly those two countries that are kind of sort of shifting the the Hollywood conversation. So if you're feeling optimistic about it because basically you think Asia, in a way, is helping the cause of Asian Americans. Well, I, it's a it's a very that's that's a Interesting, and I've talked about this a lot of times with, with other people. Yeah. I think, I, mm -hmm. I personally think mm -hmm. there is a correlation. Uh -huh. I don't think, I know a lot of people disagree with me because they feel like I'm Chinese American, I'm Korean American, uh -huh. people in China could care less about me or what I do, uh -huh. uh, and I understand that. But I do think that the more uh, familiar and comfortable that Hollywood uh -huh. gets to be around the Asian culture, uh -huh. That that spills over into the Asian American conversation too, uh -huh. right? So it may not be a direct impact. Like, if I want to work with Zaimo, uh, you know, 
I'm not going to hire, and I'm not necessarily going to hire a Chinese American writer just because he's Chinese and this person's Chinese American. So I understand, or a Chinese American actor will get cast in a Chinese film. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I totally understand that that that's there's a huge disconnect there. But I, like I said, I think I think the more we see Asian representation on the on the uh, on the screens, and just like you know Yao Ming. Yeah. to go back to basketball, came here to play basketball in America, Chinese Americans rallied around that, and they, I think there was, a, there was an impact in terms of people thinking, oh, Asian people aren't necessarily weak, short, unathletic. Right, sure. right. You know, Asian people around the world. Because media in America is such a big portal to influence people around the world that whether you're Chinese American or China, if if a non-Chinese or Chinese-American or Asian-American person sees a moving image of an Asian person doing something, there's an impact, however small or big that may be. So I do think, I, you know, I do think there is a, a correlation. I, I, I think, you know, we, we, we're talking, there's a, uh, everyone's talking about China now, and the, the, it's not just about ca uh, fl uh, flows of capital circulating and needing Chinese money. I mean... And Asian Americans obviously come from somewhere. I, you know, you can't completely separate the two. And that's when uh, I think Constance Wu recently was saying, Asian Americans have nothing to do with Asia. Of course they do. Why, why then comment on the Great Wall? Like, the, 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 her comments on the Great Wall. I love Constance Wu, by the way. I think she's fantastic. I yeah. trust, but I really disagree with that. I don't think Asian Americans do themselves... Uh, a service by by rejecting stuff from Asia. I mean, a few years ago, I remember this this guy who said, "I don't," I'm, who who told me, "I'm not interested in any of these Asian films or Korean films. I don't want uh -huh. any of that imported shit." I'm like, "What are you talking and this about, was an Asian man?" American guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I don't think it's it's clever to to reject things in principle in general. But uh, so we, you know, I'm just mentioning the Great War. I think that might be uh, something to talk about. Sure. Uh, and you've been to China. You spent a lot of time in yep. China. Have you, have you watched the Great War? I have not. I uh, have okay. Not. Well, we I, uh, I had friends that worked on it. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I mean, obviously, I know what the, the brouhaha is all about. Uh, and I've produced, you know, in China as well, doing Chinese-U.S. Yeah. collaborations. Right. Um, the Great Wall... You know, I, I would say I would I would say that there's a difference between what they did and the white uh, whitewashing thing because yeah. it's white savior, you know, versus whitewashing, that, which is two different things. Like Matt Damon's character didn't ever exist; they just created him. So it's sort of the the Tom Cruise, you know, um, like the last samurai. Last samurai. The last samurai. Why does why does a white man have to save China right. Right. or Japan? You know. Like, that's ridiculous, right? <laughs> they, they can have their own heroes, you know, versus Ghost in the Shell, which was authentically created as a Japanese character, but then they converted it to a white heroine right. to market it in the West. Either or, you know, it's... I understand Hollywood's point of view. We need to cast a recognizable, bankable star in a main role in order to get the West to come and watch it. Or even the East in, to, to a large degree because these are international movie stars, right? But that, the, the root of that problem and what's wrong with it is that they keep saying there's, because there's no bankable Asian American stars or there's right. no bankable Asian faces in the West for Hollywood movies, right? right? And, and that, is, that to me is, you know, bullshit because you guys are... You, you hold the power. You can create stars. You can create Asian American bankable stars, right? Who, if you just took a chance on them, like you. Sure. So, so it's it's a it's a vicious cycle. If you're not going to ever allow someone to break through, then we're never going to have anyone. Because ultimately, you know that that the only color that matters is green. You know, I understand okay. that. Yeah. So, uh, until you start having Asian American bankable stars, you know, you're going to have this problem forever. And so, you know, there's a lot more. It, it, it's, it, it is cut and dry to a large degree, but I also feel like, well, how do you create an Asian American star? Is it, is it just throw an Asian American into a, you know, a Marvel superhero story and suddenly that person overnight becomes a big star? I mean, 
maybe, maybe not. You know, like there's, there's other things. I get it's not that easy, but I have yet to see them take that chance, right? And so, yes, you have a handful of Asian American actors who are prominent, but would you say they're bankable stars? I, I don't know. I don't think there is one, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I'm friends with some of these people. I, I, I love all of them, you know. So, so from a bankability, bankability perspective, do you think Matt Damon was the, the thing to do for the Great Wall? Well, for, you words, know, the Chinese, not, even, even yeah. China, you know, Wanda was like, oh, we want this to be a big movie in the West. So we have to, yes. We but that's when I disagree also because you remember a few, uh, now it seems like a long time ago but when Cr Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon yeah. said, you I mean, there is a precedent for it. I mean, these guys aren't Asian Americans, but you had Chow Yun Fat in it, Michelle Yu. I forgot what kind of box office it did, but it did fantastically oh, yeah, well. It, did huge. it, did it huge. had nominations right. in the Oscars. There's not a single line in it. It seemed like it a breakthrough. English. It was a, it it was was a, a breakthrough. Film and then we forgot way. about it. Right. You know, we forgot about it. That was when, uh, I forgot the year. 2001 or two. A decade and a half, yeah. you know. And I, I mean, I see so what you're saying. I, I would say that martial arts genre mm -hmm. is that, the language of, you know, fists and flying kicks. Right. That, that sort of, that translated universally and in the West. Mm -hmm. And in communities and cities that you would not otherwise think would watch an Asian film. You know, so I feel like when it comes to martial arts, whether it was a Jackie Chan, Jet Li, or Crouching Tiger type film, you, they were able to use the hook of that versus like and, you know, and who's in Jackie it. Jackie Chan's interesting point language. because Jackie Chan was Hollywoodized. I mean, they brought him over, but he was made to be almost well. That's his style anyway. But he's more of a buffoon than than say what what they doing with Matt Damon. Right. Right. Because I'm I, thinking about the, re the reverse of this. Right. And the problem is, is that Hollywood is still the center of the entertainment industry. Right. That might be swi switching, but... Well, yeah, the energy's changing a little. I think it'll always kind of be the, the, the dominant, you know, dick sort of influencer. But, but China's definitely getting its own, you know, b building its own market. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously doing a lot of stuff with America, trying to you know, learn from the, from the best. Um, and the new China, if you will now, because it is, you know, when Crouching Tiger came out in 2000, it's a completely different time now. Sure. So the, the studios and then, you know, the powers that be over there are thinking a totally different way, you know, and they're yeah. thinking, we want, we want Great Wall to sell in America as much as it does here. So, so I feel like that. I that's well, my take on why they're thinking the same. That. It's like you said, they're thinking the same as Hollywood. Green is what's the most important color. Right. But are they thinking of? I mean, are they exploiting Matt Damon in a reverse way, where it's like, okay, well, if Hollywood only wants to see white heroes, let's give them one. Uh yeah, I guess you could say that. I mean, I don't agree with what they did. I I think yeah. it's stupid that they had to create this character to right. to, to to you know pander to try to create you know to the western audience i understand the reasoning i don't agree with it i think uh you know what what would be my solution or answer i mean i don't necessarily have one but i i do think that you know at some point you have to i i, I look at great wall as almost like a a, a, you know, a bike with training wheels because right now china's trying to figure out how to make organic product that travels and they have to use like a crutch and Matt Damon was their crutch. Okay. And until they get to a level of sophistication in their storytelling, you know, from a technical standpoint, from a story standpoint, from, you know, everything, acting, so directing. You don't think that level of sophistic uh, sophistication or skills is there yet? Uh, in, in, the in China, in mainland China, I, I don't, not, don't overall, so. not overall. You have a handful yeah. of, of... But don't you think it's also an issue that has to do with censorship? I mean... You know, you oh, worked yeah. in China, For sure. you have a lot yes. of... Uh, Without question. Well, there's yes. also, yes. Uh, yes. I've yeah. noticed, and maybe you could expand on this, but a lot of Chinese films, they, they have distribution, they, have, they are established in the States, but their films play here and are just for like what the, 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 the exchange students. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. no local people are really going to see them. So yeah. that, there needs to be some kind of break there. Although I don't, the sophistication, there's the sophistication of how good your budget and technically mm -hmm. sophisticated you are, and then it's right. the sophistication of how good your stories are. Right. 
I think there's a lot of factors. I mean, language is obviously a big thing. Right. Everyone knows Americans don't like to read subtitles. So these kinds of movies are but never... But again, there's the crouching tiger, hidden dragon thing. Well, I, mean, I think that, again, it goes back to... It, the language I, I is agree. in the martial arts. It was the so physical. I mean, it's, it's not really... I mean, it's a, it's a wuxia film, and it has, a, okay, it has a fair amount of action in there, but I mean, it's an angry movie. I mean, well, it has fully fledged yeah. characters. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd be really curious to analyze that film. I think it helped that it was uh, there was an only James Seamus situation. I mean, it's an they, American movie, right? So exactly. That's, uh, so it's another thing. When I hear people say, uh, "What is the what is the formula to make a global Chinese film? Uh, when are we going to fi find it?" Right. I, I think in a way we already found it. Okay. It was, it's, it's, already, it's already been made. These are concepts are very elusive and hard to grasp, so we really only really scratched a little bit of the surface of, uh, of the problem. But that was, that, was, that was really interesting to hear your perspective. Yeah, Brian, thank you very much. It's really uh, enlightening. And we look forward to watching uh, The Snake Head. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, thank you. I, you know, we have a long ways to go, but we're getting there day by day, and so uh, I can't wait to share it with everyone. So. When do you think you're going to complete it? Uh, well, you mean post edited everything out in the world? Um, if we're lucky, you know, we'll we'll get out. We'll start getting out into the festival circuit. Festival end of this year, <laughs> I would say. Yeah. I mean, it, it's you know we're, you know how long it takes. So on on the sort of the, if it was fast tracked, it'd be the end of this year. But I'm sure some point in 2018 is 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 more, you know, likely. So okay. yeah, we all look forward to seeing it definitely. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Thank Come you back anytime. Yeah, I'll be at Yaf. Yeah. All right. Bye. <laughs>